Hi, I'm Matt Lieb. And I'm Vince Mancini. And this is Pod Yourself Yourself a Gun. Gun, a Sopranos podcast where Vince Mancini and I go through every single episode of The Sopranos and talk Talk about about it. it. We are uh, very excited to have you all here listening in. Um, I was told by Vince that most podcasts at the very end of the episode encourage people to give it five stars in a review, but we're not most podcasts, Vince. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it up top because people forget and you know, they listen to the whole thing. They consume for free and then they're just like, Oh, I don't need to do anything for these guys. Fuck them. I just want to be like other people. I don't want to be like other people. I want us to be different. I want us to beg for uh validation right up top yeah that's that, that, that's how i i choose to get live the mission my life statement out of the way at the beginning yeah so uh you know go ahead and do that uh because i've been asking uh, at the top of each episode for like the last five and uh it's not really been helping a lot people uh you know are like no i won't so i'm just gonna keep doing it until uh, one of you decides to do it all right vince i'm very excited for today's episode you are um yeah, I mean, I'm usually very excited uh, to talk Sopranos, but today uh, our guest uh, often talks Sopranos on his own podcast, Chapo Trap House. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest today is Matt Chrisman. Hey, hey. How you doing, Matt? Oh, I'm vibing. Yeah, you're vibing right now? Fuck oh, yeah. yeah, that's an early vibe. We just got started and you're already vibing. Well, yes. It, I mean, I try to keep it at a, at a simmer at all times, but right oh. now it's bubbling a little bit. Damn, your bass line is vibing. Holy shit. It bodes well for the rest of the cast. Sure does. So, Matt, you are uh, you are a Sopranos fan, am I right? Oh, uh, I. You know what? I'm becoming more of one with time. I, I never was a huge one because like, I was right there at the sweet spot to be, be a, a, a Sopranos super fan when it first came out. Yeah. Uh, but it just never really grabbed me. Not like, say, Deadwood did or <laughs> The Wire. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but it's really going back and rewatching it, especially as people have talked about it, and uh, you know, and it become memeified. Uh, specifically, uh, my co-hosts, specifically Felix, mm-hmm. uh, making Sopranos sort of a watchword. Uh, it made me look back and watch it again, and with some time, uh, a lot of the stuff that I guess I doesn't really notice at the time because I was I was sort of feeling suffocated by the real sort of the visual gloom of the show I think, oh yeah yeah, uh, yeah have cuts through now like and i'm like and i'm just astounded by how uh how culturally uh prescient and insightful that show is and of course because of that how hilariously funny it is that's funny like when deadwood came out i had such a hard time getting into it because it's so like fucking theatrical it feels like the, <laughs> the like drama drama kid like swearing hour at, at first yeah and then, oh uh, no totally i get uh, that yeah and i was like what the fuck is this and everyone has like a different weird accent but uh you know a lot of good performances in that show yeah, I, think, I never yeah, finished I th- Deadwood, and and I feel bad because I was such a fan of David Milch's other show, John from Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> I have I to like, watch that someday. One of these days, I'm going to just watch that because it's only got a season, and I'm just going to blow through it in a day and see what my brain feels like after. I that. barely remember. He was like a surfer or something. What was that show? Apparently, it was an allegory for the Iraq War. <laughs> That's what David Milch said. And yes, it's about a mysterious surfer from Cincinnati, known for its beaches, who shows mm-hmm. up in a California town and he's like sort of a mysterious messianic figure. That And the whole thing is apparently about George Bush and the Iraq War. And I definitely have been intrigued. I just never got around to it. I never got that from from watching the show. Uh, I, I was just kind of, uh, I was in that sort of uh, lost a phase of uh, TV viewing where where you're kind of hoping that there's an answer for everything, you know, and and it was uh, just one of those shows where I was like, well, certainly this is all leading somewhere. I yeah. mean, it's it's incredibly mysterious. That's John pre, only lost finale uh, TV watching right there. But yeah, no, they, they you know, it, they canceled it. And nothing ever happens. And he just <laughs> uh, John's a guy who talks, uh, but only in phrases that he hears other people say. Um, and it's very confusing and there's some incest in it and it's uh it's very weird but um yeah i I tried watching deadwood but uh yeah it was a little it was too theatrical for me too also at the time i was doing my own share of uh balls of dope 
So I was just like, <laughs> I was like, this show just makes me want to do more, more uh, opiates. Yeah, so like, where can, where can, where's Mr. Wu at? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, need, I need to get that fucking connect because that guy's got all the balls of dope. Who stole the fucking dope? Cocksucker! Oh, Jesus. Um, all right. Before we uh, just dive right in, uh, it wouldn't be Pod Yourself a Gun if we did not play the theme song. Pod. 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 Podcast. Pod. 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 Podcast. I have to say that song. It certainly didn't help me get uh, enamored of the show. I've yeah, no. Been baffled by that song and oh. why it's there. It was the yeah, classic no, Alabama three tune. Uh, <laughs> who, you know, about having a blue moon in your eye, which we've all had at one time or when another. a blue moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. That's Sopranos. <laughs> I gotta say, like one of the things I love about David Chase is how fucking bad his musical taste is, uh, and it kind of comes through. It's he's got some hits in there, but. Uh, the the theme song especially and then a few episodes ago we did the the mashup of what was it, it was like henry mancini and uh and sting holy shit yeah, yeah. no his is he's kind of um uh he's got shitty tarantino vibes with his music <laughs> choices or like uh you know like a, a shitty scorsese like i think he thinks it helps cinematically but a lot of the times you're just like why why did you choose this and uh this episode is actually no different it actually ends with a song uh sung by uh steve van zant of what is it e street band mm -hmm, fame mm -hmm. uh and uh and he uh and it's not good it's just it's i thought like, it was like a i thought it was a deep cut of rolling stones at first until i shazam same it yeah 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 it is uh it is lil stevie and it's him singing which i'm impressed by the fact that it doesn't sound like sill singing uh although i'd be i'd yeah, be down it might be better yeah um so today we are going to be talking about from season three episode 12 of the sopranos amour foo or um, uh, amour foe i don't know how to do a french accent amour foe um, which premiered uh, May 13th, 2001. Uh, Vince, give us a little bit of the HBO Max synopsis. Inspired by a tale from Ralph about how his father got made, Jackie Jr. decides to make his move in organized crime by instigating a robbery caper at a local card game. Reminded by Melfi of the psychological parallels between his relationships with Gloria and his mother, Tony finds it harder and harder to spend time with his crazy love. I think that's nice. the most sarcastic quotes we've ever had in a yeah. HBO Max uh, synopsis. Yeah, you get the feeling that people writing this uh, these synopses, uh, that they're starting to really resent their job. After a while, they're just going to be like, more mafia bullshit, Tony wants to fuck his mom. What do you want from me? Yeah, I miss. I feel like the journalism used to be more boring, and so there used to be a lot more pun headlines because it was someone mm -hmm. who just, you know, they're desperate for any sort of creative outlet of any kind, and so they would just put it all into the headline pun. And uh, yeah. we don't really have that now that everyone's just writing frivolous shit all the time, and it's kind of kind of miss it. Speaking of frivolous headlines, though, uh, Vince, I think, and by the way, that was a good segue. So yeah, don't job. you don't. Don't you fucking scoff at me. <laughs> um, Vince, I think it is time for us to uh, take a little trip back to what was happening at the time that this episode came That's out. That's right. We need cultural context. So we're going to find out what was happening uh, on May 13th, 2001, when this episode first premiered. Walk, walk, daddy, daddy, bop, bop, shoo, bop, remember then, 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 remember <laughs> Remember when it's the lowest form of conversation. Got to get that record scratch in there. Um, yeah, so headlines uh, on this day included uh, from the, the New York Post. This was a fun one. Uh, E-shopping, an idea whose time has come again? Uh, 
because it was out of fashion and now it's back. Here's an idea. Quit your fancy jobs at Goldman Sachs and set up a website to sell Palm Pilots, other consumer electronics, <laughs> and sometime in the future, uh, other stuff. No, it's not 1997. It's MarketBoy.com, which quietly launched three weeks ago. Market Boy? <laughs> MarketBoy.com. Jesus Christ, that sounds like <laughs> today that would be dark web and you could only buy Market Boys on Bitcoin. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's where you got your adrenochrome. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Out of sheer curiosity, Bullseye called R. May Lee, 39, who quit her job as COO of the credit derivatives business at Goldman, just as the NASDAQ tanked a year ago. The voluble Ms. Lee and Market Boys president, Kazimir Wierzynski, 30, a former senior derivatives trader in the Emerging Debt Markets Group at Goldman, Jesus. believes they have the winning business model for e-tailing. <laughs> Shoppers sit at their computers and bid on items as if they were bidding, buying securities. Bids and offers, just like the pros. Users log in once and browse by product. They can pay full whack or haggle. What the fuck? Market yeah. boy. Market so boy. this was eBay, but uh, but worse? Yeah, sounds like it. Um, okay. There's also a uh, What I Watch segment from the post, which uh, had Jamie Lynn Sigler from The Sopranos. Oh, Meadow. Yeah, Meadow. And uh, her... Her response, uh, friends, the writing is so clever. It's great. I laughed through the entire show. I'm a big fan of Chandler. He's my favorite character. <laughs> is this written by a bot? <laughs> Matthew Perry is very talented. I mean, you know, the, the all true. Sure. All true. Um, Could he be any more talented? <laughs> <laughs> uh, other things that happened, uh, Perry Como, dead at 88. Uh, R.I.P. to a legend. Yeah, mm -hmm. or 87, according to the L.A. Times, who got it wrong on the front page somehow, um, Blew it. which is a fun thing that I discovered. Um, They've always been a trash paper. Go on. <laughs> uh, the Ali G. Show won Best Comedy at the British Academy Television Awards. Okay, rightfully so. Badass. And uh, Silvio Berlusconi's coalition won another Italian election. That's a spicy meatball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cowabunga bunga. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Yeah. Fucking Berlusconi. Remember <laughs> remember when like Berlusconi's rise to power was the biggest embarrassment uh in the West? <laughs> when yeah. we were just like, oh boy, this guy. <laughs> Before we all got our own everybody gets a Berlusconi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I still gotta say that clip of him where he's like walking down the street and he sees a meter maid like putting a ticket on a car and he goes behind her and pretends to have sex with her. <laughs> It's <laughs> still like one of the greatest <laughs> clips. Oh man, what was what was why was he bad again? I, like I'm trying to remember. I remember back at the in the day uh, when he became you know prime minister or whatever the fuck they have there in uh, Italy. It was like it was embarrassing because he was just kind of uh, like a was he a reality TV star? Well, he or? was the guy who put titties on television. Like he had a yeah, bunch he, of uh, right. he was essentially like if Mur Rupert Murdoch became president. Oh, okay. He owned the basically the entire Italian media. Oh, all and right. was a freaky old horny toad and <laughs> was essentially a crypto fascist and member of the P2 Masonic Lodge that carried out the strategy of tension in the 70s and 80s. Oh, that, damn. Uh, prevented the Communist Party from ever taking power in Italy. Yeah, wow. but he did love big titties. And, uh, and he loved titties. You got to yeah. respect that about him. Um, it did seem like that, like his the biggest fault, or at least the one I kept hearing about, was like, man, this guy fucks too much. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was always just like, ah, let him fuck. Why, why is this a problem? Yeah, that seems but like that is always what ends up getting pathologized is is the most uh, epiphenomenal parts of uh, these monsters' behavior. I mean, right. it's like Trump. Like at the end of the day, the real horror of Trump after four years was just that he was uh, he was he swore too much and tweeted too often. Right. Exactly. It's uh, it's it's weird. It's just that, that like I I didn't know half of the shit that you just said about him. And I was just like, oh, yeah, that's a guy who uh, had fuck parties and people were mad about it, even though it was Italy and Italy is a fuck party. <laughs> it's just one big fuck party. That's what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason to believe you're wrong. There's just not that much of news that comes that filters through from Italy. So we got really only just like the baseline tabloid headlines. Yeah. Um, the top movies, uh, The Mummy Returns. Fuck uh, yeah. Returning at number one. A Knight's Tale, new at number two. And uh, Bridget Jones' Diary. Uh, Mummy Returns featuring uh, some of the worst CGI ever committed to film in the yeah. form of The Rock's Scorpion King. 
Yeah. yeah. And also the first time I ever uh, heard the word hotep. Oh, wow. That is, yeah. that's a landmark. You know, uh, Brendan Fraser, though, still, uh, still, I was glad it's good to see him on film, no matter in what form it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the top song, still uh, Janet Jackson, All For You, is still the number one uh, on the Hot 100. And nice. Returning uh, in the rock songs, it's still "It's Been a While" by Stained. Fuck yes, which spent an incredible twenty weeks at number one. So it's, I mean, that that, that that that's a reason to defend David Chase's musical choices because you have to remember it was two thousand one, which is it's been a while. In other words, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. One of the worst eras of music, at least music. I uh, wholly wholehearted agreement on that one. Especially, I was thinking about that a, a couple days ago. Just holy crap. Just comprehensively terrible. There was like a period of pretty solid stuff in the mid-90s when sort of indie rock kind of came back. And then and then we had ska and then we had swing. And then for like, I don't know, three or four years, it was all just... All new metal. Terrible new metal. And then even worse, like post-grunge, post-new metal stained type shit where, you know, you're just sad about stuff. Yeah, to me, the new metal was the best stuff to to come out of that period because it was uh, at the very least uh, hit like kind of an emotional nerve that I appreciated as a middle schooler. Um, whereas like the post grunge shit was the stuff that I was like, I'm not really sure who this is for. Yeah, I mean, you had like Nickelback and Stain, where it just kind of sounded like you put a bunch of grunge bands in a blender mm-hmm. and made it Canadian. Yeah, and then you got uh, your uh, your puddle of mud, and then you got your trapped who uh, recently got into a Twitter beef with us. Yeah, well, they had a uh, they looked like they were about to date rape Lady Liberty in a meme, and it was <laughs> it was really funny. Um, yeah, it was. Anyway, that's uh, that's been the Remember When machine. All right, so that was what was going on at the time that this episode came out. Um, so now just to, to recap uh, what our B stories are uh, for Amor Faux, uh, I'm just going to read to you the Bada B stories. Um, <clears throat> and since this is uh, an episode called uh, Amor Faux or Crazy Love, I'm doing it to the tune of Crazy in Love by Beyonce. Mm. Um, See, I thought Tony's you would have gone with Paul Simon there, but... You, you know, know I, I thought about it, but I was like, no, this just is a little too little too esoteric. I thought like people would be like, I, I don't know this melody at all. Everyone knows Crazy in Love, Vince. Oh, sure. I thought everybody knew the fucking album Graceland, but maybe... Not everybody knows fucking Paul Simon's Graceland. Come on. Isn't that what really, do you think? It's his most famous album. Come on. It is. It is. It's a very good album. Um, but the B stories are Tony's Love kind of looking... So crazy right now. Carms Priest got her thinking she'll stay for right now. Jackie Jr. wants to rise, but he's lazy right now. Gloria's co-worker got two tickets to Raffi right now. Melfi explains crazy love. Got him thinking, got him thinking he's fucking his mom. So those are the Bada B stories of this episode. I think they're clear. I think I've made it clear. Everyone knows what's going on. Um, general let's start with general s- thoughts. Yeah. General thoughts time. Uh, this feels kind of like, uh, I feel like there's one guy in the writer's room of the Sopranos. Maybe it's David Chase himself. Who's like watching the show transform into what the Sopranos kind of became. And he's kind of going like, come on guys, let's not stray too far away from analyze this. Like, I, he, yeah, uh, <laughs> but I don't know. To me, this is like one of my favorite episodes and, uh, sure. And, and particularly like the psychoanalysis annoyed me so much less in this episode than it normally does. Uh, and there's definitely like multiple laugh out loud moments, but I think it also ends on like one of the most legitimately uh, menacing scenes from oh, the Sopranos. Yeah. And uh, it ended on a high note. And for some reason that last scene stuck with me where I like, I really, I haven't seen it probably in 20 years. And I really remembered almost that entire monologue he gave to Gloria at the end. Oh, you mean the 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 final fight scene between the two of no, them? No, Patty Parisi in the in the car where he tells oh, her it's not yeah. going to be cinematic. I was like, that's a pretty good line. Yeah, that was good. Also, talking about scraping nipple, nipples off the pavement or or off the leather seats, I was like, damn, how you gonna how you gonna get the nipples off? Well, they took like <laughs> probably the, one of the least scary scary characters in the show and made him scary, which was uh, pretty impressive. Matt, what did what did you think in general of this episode? Uh, I thought it was a a, a, a a good. It's a good cross section. Sopranos wise, you got good bits from everybody. 
You got uh, uh, some. Uh, you got uh, some uh, fail lordness from uh, AJ. You got uh, you got uh, Tony in therapy, uh, breathing like a wounded water buffalo. Uh, you've got all of the young mob guys being morons. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you've got Carmela pretending to uh, care about anything other than herself. It's good. Yeah. I also yeah. like just in terms of like the evolution of television. Um, you know, a lot of The Sopranos sort of takes place kind of before like prestige TV was really a thing. And this, like, you kind of get both. You get both sides. Like, you get the full. You get the full story arc of Gloria just about like in one episode, and then yeah. And then in with the Jackie Jr. storyline, I feel like if this was a storyline on Fargo, it would take almost an entire season to play out. Whereas mm-hmm. uh, here you get, they almost complete the Jackie Jr. story arc. Like you know he's going to get whacked or something's going to happen and they don't quite finish it off. So it's kind of like moving from, in the, in the first part, in the first few seasons of The, of the Sopranos, each episode they would basically complete like a whole arc. And here you had one that basically went the whole distance and then you had one where they just cut off like the very end to give you a nice teaser for the next episode well let's let's talk about jackie's storyline first then um jackie jr kicks uh out some latinx fellas uh out of a pizza parlor for doing microaggressions in the credits those three guys are just listed as cholo one cholo two and cholo three (laughs) which i don't know first time i watched it i didn't really i didn't really pick up on the fact that those guys were supposed to be cholos at all no they were not cholos (laughs) at all that's not what a cholo is Other than the fact that, you know, he made like a taco, uh, Jackie made a Taco Bell joke when he pulled out his piece, but... Uh, yeah, they were Latino, and they were just like, yeah, but a Latino gangster is a cholo. That is not correct. You can't just be a, like, there was no long socks, there was no bald head, there was no flannel. I think this is your classic East Coast bias at work among the the, the show creators. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they don't, I you know, they, they probably have a, a lot of writers who are in LA, and they only know uh, the word cholo. So uh, that's what they went with. Um, so Jackie uh, is he's trying to he's trying to rise up uh, in, in, in gangland. Uh, he and Meadow have now broken up. And uh, Ralphie explains how uh, Tony and Jackie Jr. rose up, which was by jacking Feech Lamana uh, and jacking his card game, which is uh, a character that we're going to get to know a little bit later in uh oh, i didn't remember sopranos. that feach actually came back into the into the picture yeah feach is the the guy uh who gets released from prison in, in i think season four season five you remember him <laughs> not really but well i don't yeah, know robert loja yeah who apparently was supposed to be a a season-long protagonist uh antagonist sort of in a richie april sense but then they canned him halfway through because robert loja was so annoying <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Do you remember I could that see commercial it. where Robert Loja was just in like a orange juice commercial, like telling some kid to drink his orange juice? Drink the orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice time capsule. Your mother's right. Your minute made orange tangerine taste great. If you say so, Mr. Loja. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so after Ralphie explains uh, that, you know, this is how... Jackie Senior and Tony rose up. Uh, Jackie you just got to rob has... the mafia to convince them to put you in the mafia. <laughs> yeah, possibly the dumbest idea uh, ever. And and it's interesting because you're, you're wondering whether or not Ralphie was telling him this uh, to try to sway them to do something similar, or if it was just him reminiscing. It's kind of hard to tell. But uh, Ralphie Jackie does a great job of being like good stepdad, bad stepdad at the same time. Like he's constantly he's like. He's the only one that treats uh, Jackie Jr. as the moron that he is and sort of gives, right. him, gives him the advice within that, you know, assumption, which uh, anything else is useless advice to him because he is a, a dipshit. But within that, he somehow he somehow still pushes him in the wrong direction. And uh, he also wears another like casual ascot in this uh, in this episode. And I don't think I've ever seen anyone else pull off just a, like a, an ascot as casual around the house wear as well as Ralphie does. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, as a gangster, it's like, uh, he can kind of wear whatever he wants and he still scares the shit out of me. Like it doesn't matter how shitty his hair piece is 
or uh, if he's wearing a bolo tie, like the dude is just, uh, he just uh, exudes gangsterism and, uh, and, and, it, and it really works, you know, which is crazy too, because the first time I ever saw this dude, he was fucking Cyrus from the Matrix. And I was like, I don't know if I'm ever going to get used to the fucking Cyrus being a gangster. And now I'm rewatching the show and I was like, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm scared of this dude. I would not, I would not fuck with him. So Jackie uh, has the dumbest idea uh, and he explains it to Dino uh, in, in this clip. Gene Panacorvo's got a car game. We can take it down right now. What are you fucking crazy? He's with Ralph. So for all types of purposes, that's Ralph's game. That's even better. Fuck him and his rinchy dishes bullshit. You know what? I think he's a fucking secret fag. I don't know, Jackie. What if they find out that it's us? We want them to. You know it's gonna get squashed. The worst will happen, we have to give some of it back. We pull this off. We're like free agents. We dictate the terms, not them. Because we show balls. <laughs> like everyone in the show's kind of LARPing, but uh, you know, especially Jackie and Dino. And uh, with Dino, Dino's definitely like your classic Scarface poster character in this oh yeah yeah for sure and i and they uh I, I like the way that he's like yeah 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 all we gotta do is show balls and then we get respect and uh and it, it's just step one balls <laughs> yeah, step, step one. two respect step three <laughs> money exactly <laughs> first you get the balls then you <laughs> get to show them then you get the power like the idea of them like all you have to do is show balls and then everyone will respect you is uh i mean you know it's a good theory uh doesn't work out so well um so it all goes horribly wrong jackie and dino uh decide to rob ralphie's game uh because you know it's ralphie so what's the worst that could happen and uh so they do it right before the the crank wears off oh but first there's a scene uh, which is this is one of my favorite scenes uh, in the in the episode. It's where they're waiting uh, from a call from Carlo, who they're calling because he has a shotgun. Which is that's I think that is a, that's a good like hey my standard for mafia friends is what kind of gun they have. And uh, while they're waiting for the call, they're they're just watching that scene uh, from Basic Instinct with Sharon Stone and uh, <laughs> and chortling. Uh, I and like that I they a, showed the 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 money shot of basic instinct like they didn't uh like you they didn't they didn't skip that for us which was nice because if they did i probably would have been like oh man they they got me all hyped up and now i gotta go watch basic instinct but nope they showed you the part that you needed to see yeah the best part the mm -hmm. part that we all watched the movie for and to be honest was greatly disappointed in when i saw it uh you know what, what the first time i saw it i was like i i really thought it was going to be a lot more, you know, I thought you were going to get to see like some detail a little bit, you know, just kind of want to, I guess what this I wanted was, was a close up before 4k. Yeah, I guess so. It's unfortunate though. Cause it's still like what? 16 millimeter film. Come on. Show, show a little pussy detail. That's all I want. <laughs> That's what I came here for. Um, but I do, I have a clip of them just sitting watching Sharon Stone's pussy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. This one. Come on, hurry up. Call Carlo. They show my favorite part yet? No, I think it's coming up. Come on, dude, move over. Give me some room. Fuck you, it's my house. Here it comes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just two horny best friends watching vaginas on television just together. Just guys being dudes. Just dudes being dudes. I just, I love it that this is their, this is their pregame for right before they're about to do an armed robbery of a mafia card game. They're just like, just gonna look at one of those squid each. <laughs> you had to watch it with your friends back then. You couldn't, you didn't have like a laptop. You could go in the corner and watch it alone. You had to see it uh, with everybody around. Yeah, no, there was. It's like. That whole thing was it was less about you know getting horny than it was about uh, is about a thing to talk about. Did you see that lady's pussy in that movie? Yeah, there yeah. it is. It, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. We're it's seeing a, it together. It, it's a it's a social experience, you know, and uh, and that is true. There was a time where uh, you know we didn't all have our individual laptops where we could look at close ups of pussies and uh, keep them as uh, you know little closely held secrets. But, you know, there was a time where we had to watch porn together. 
I, and that was yeah, strange time. I remember being at a drive-in movie theater. I can't remember what the movie we were actually there to see was, but I remember that on the other screen there was Sliver, which was like the other naked Sharon Stone movie. And so yeah, we were yeah. all like trying to sneak off to see uh, Sliver on the other drive-in screen instead of the actual movie they were supposed to be watching. Did you see it? Oh, yeah. It's good. Hell yeah. It's a good movie. I mean, not as good of a movie uh, as Basic Instinct, but definitely like a lot more Sharon Stone being naked scenes. Remember when we all watched Monsters Ball just because <laughs> Halle Berry oh, yeah. showed her titties? Oh, yeah. There was also, the, I forget, I, th- I think, what was it? Like The Professional, where there's like the scene of Sharon Stone and uh, Sylvester Stallone in the shower scene together. And there was like... Mm-hmm. Almost more of Sylvester Stallone in the scene than there was Sharon Stone. It was like going all yeah. the way back to his roots as a softcore porn actor. Uh, I, I don't know. The, the Professional? I think it was The Professional. I think it's like uh, Sylvester Stallone. Oh, yeah. Who- Sharon Stone, Stallone uh, having incredibly uncomfortable looking sex <laughs> in a giant shower. Because not only are they lying on cold porcelain, but Stallone's body just looks like this horrifying. It looks like an obstacle course. <laughs> he's it's just, just like these covered ripples. In, yeah, he's covered little, in baby oil, like an uncomfortable amount of baby oil, and uh, and he's got those. He's got the kind of muscles that are like obviously muscles, but also weirdly asymmetrical. You imagine getting like holding him. It's like where is there any any softness here? This is. <laughs> This is like having sex inside uh, the back of a cement mixer. No, you just have to climb him like a gnarled uh, Joshua tree. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't have to do much climbing because he's like 5'8", but, uh, you know. Sharon Stone also showed uh, titties in a movie, in an Albert Brooks film called The Muse. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you guys saw that. Did you see The Muse? It was like a, a oh, movie I remember about- that one. I don't think I saw it, but I remember that one. Yeah, and uh, it was just kind of like, uh, you know, it's an Albert Brooks comedy. And I remember uh, her, her just kind of showing titties in that movie and going like, hey, Sharon, let's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and not every movie I need to see this. Come on. like. <laughs> well, there was a while there where she knew, you know, she knew the, she, you want to dance with the one that brung you, you know. She knew what uh, <laughs> got her into the dance. So she was going to keep hitting it. Yeah, she seems yeah. super cool, but apparently she wasn't. Like there was the famous story that the crew on Basic Instinct hated her so much that they all peed in the hot tub before her hot tub <laughs> yes, scene. I, the whole I crew? Know. Yeah, apparently. I mean, that was the story. I don't know if it was the whole, whole squad hitting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they ran a train on a hot tub. All right. I like it. So back to Sopranos. Uh, so uh, the Jackie and Dino uh, uh, rob Ralphie's card game uh, before the crank wears off. It goes horribly wrong, and they kill Sunshine. Mm. Uh, and then also, so, yeah, go yeah, ahead. My hot take for this episode is that Sunshine had it coming because he just kept just saying, uh, he just kept parroting different sayings while they're robbing him. He kept giving the shitty like eighth grade teacher advice that he got from a quote book. And, yeah, uh, which is not going to work well for someone like Jackie Jr., who probably got in trouble a lot in eighth grade. He was being epic, is what he was being, and uh, you can't really blame anybody if they're in a, a high stress, tense situation with firearms for shooting someone who's getting epic. Yeah, that's and true. I have a clip of that actually. Just sunshine not shutting up. It's son, leave him while you're looking good. Just give it to him, sunshine. Victory has a hundred fathers, but defeat is an orphan. Shut up! Shut up! Stop fucking looking at me! Come on, hurry up! Let's get the fuck out of here! If you can keep your head while those around you can't, then you are. The gun has already <laughs> gone off and he's still giving shitty advice. <laughs> that wasn't even the correct quote. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if, if it you wasn't. can keep your head w- when all about you are losing theirs. Mm. That's from Kipling. He blew it. That's well, why I killed him because he fucking get the, got the quote wrong. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. That's a surefire way to piss Jackie Jr. off is to misquote Kipling. <laughs> and it, uh, yeah, it it ends up uh, getting Sunshine killed, but it also ends up getting um, Carlo killed. He gets shot right square in the uh, forehead, um, yeah. and then uh, and then Jackie uh, robs a, a car because the getaway getaway driver left as soon as uh, the bullets started flying, which I thought was. Um, 
Uh, This is the most accurate reaction, I think, to uh, a situation like that. Because there's no fucking way that I would just be like, I'm just going to wait till the shooting stops. So he leaves. just chill right here. Yeah, I'm going to just chill. uh, (laughs) Like, meter's still running. And uh, so he robs uh, someone else's car, Jackie does, and then just leaves Dino in the lurch in probably (laughs) the funniest funniest scene ever. uh, Just in terms of, like, Jackie is such a bitch. Like he's been well, a bitch his, this entire show, and now it's like just that is his epic whole problem bitchness. is like he can't figure out he can't figure out the uh, obviously in these in this gangster world there is a time to be like a complete sociopath like just you know completely self interested sociopath yeah and then at other times when you're like supposed to feign respect and stand up for your boys and whatnot and he he can never figure out the right times to do that because. You know, obviously, like if any, if any, there, if if there was any time when he should have actually uh, helped one of his boys out, it's like you don't leave the obvious connection to you at the crime scene, <laughs> and like he's got this one, he's got this one guy that these other people only know as Jackie Junior's dumb friend, and yeah. inst- instead of picking him up, he's like, oh no, I gotta f- fuck this guy, and so he takes off. Uh, and basically has signed his own death, death warrant in that moment. And, uh, you know, I, I do enjoy watching Dino uh, plead for his life uh, by just asking nicely, please. please. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which, uh, you know, could have worked. It I don't seems, know. It seems more realistic than Sunshine's reaction. Sunshine does the thing that people in movies always seem to do that I have a hard time believing anyone in real life would do is that, you know, you start getting all fucking indignant when someone's got a, a gun in your face and, you know, you t- start telling them to go fuck themselves. Yeah. I'd like to think I would do that. You know what? I probably would. <laughs> sure. Yeah, dude, I definitely would have. And if I had been on that plane during 9-11, same mm. shit, dude. I would have fucking, I would have fucked those terrorists up. Hell yeah. Uh, Jackie escapes, and now Chris wants revenge. Wants revenge on uh, on Jackie, and uh, Tony is not letting him do it. Uh, and Tony ends up pressuring Ralphie to give Jackie a pass, which is, uh, which is a, a really, it's a really interesting scene because uh, I think... It is pretty clear what uh, Tony's motivation is, but just to like drive the point home, he decides to make Ralphie feel bad for being a bad stepdad. Uh, and I, see, uh, I didn't, I, you know. I didn't think that was what was happening. I thought they were both trying to pass the buck onto each other and trying to each. They were each trying to deny responsibility for having to whack the old boss's son there. Well, they they were, except for, no, I, Tony clearly did not want Jackie to be whacked. And I think what Tony ends up doing... he just didn't want to order it. I think he didn't want to be the guy. Oh, well, he definitely didn't want to order the whacking, but he also was encouraging uh, Ralphie to, you know, go with his gut here and giving uh, Jackie a pass. I, I actually, I have I, a I He's have just a trying to get Ralphie to take ownership of whatever the decision is. I want to give the kid a pass. Well, I think you should go with your instincts on this, Ralph. You do? But Furio took a hit. Chris, these are made men. Well, make sure they respect your decision. Because I'm sure you're going to do the right thing. This is Rosalie's kid. Well, that's well understand if you want to give him a pass. And I'm sure everybody else will, too. Now, hey, your decision goes the other way. The one thing you cannot do, Ralph, is blame yourself. You took this kid under your wing. You schooled him as best you could, didn't you? I think this is yours. Stupid kid was carrying it around during the holidays. You see what I'm saying? I mean, he's totally just saying you were a shitty dad, and if you kill him, this is so on you. I don't That's know. what he's I doing. I still think it's it's the writers trying to build the tension of, like, is Ralphie going to cop to this or not? Because he, mm-hmm. clear, he clearly just put him up to this. And then yeah. he's leaving him. He's leaving him hanging. Also, Tony is talking to him about himself and to himself when he says mm. all that stuff about how you did the best you could. You raised him as well as you could, because yeah. he knows that he didn't do that with his kid, specifically AJ. <laughs> <laughs> and he has to have like everyone has to. Everyone is all they can perpetuate their self delusions to the degree that they all reinforce each other's. And yeah. So 
It's like, hey, we're all doing as best we can, right? Even though none of them are. They're a bunch of lazy <laughs> fucking assholes <laughs> who just let their kids just do whatever and are selfish pricks. Yeah. There's a but fun in- glimpse into like how the mafia works where Jackie and Dino are like kicking up to Ralphie and they're like, hey, this means you protect us now, right? And it's like, <laughs> no, basically the mafia works is like you just keep paying other criminals until they decide that you're like indispensable enough not to kill and mm-hmm. uh, it's a pyramid scheme yeah that's just like every other element of the american economy and ralphie's like In no fact, you have you obviously haven't paid us enough money for us to give a shit about you yet but keep keep doing it keep going yeah yeah he paid uh he paid hello money is what he was like yeah this money gets you a, a hello in public which is uh it's a, that's a very expensive hello um but yeah in fairness to tony when he is saying you know like he, he is talking about himself like doing the best he could for Jackie. But in fairness to him, he did do way better for Jackie than than Ralphie did. Because like Ralphie was bringing him along to like, you know, beat up r- random people and fucking like taking him, taking him to the mafia gym, basically. And like arming him and fucking like having him kick up to him and shit like that. Like, you know, for all Tony's faults, he was doing the best he could to make sure that Jackie wasn't, um, you know, getting into. Yeah, I mean, they both were, and then, the, the, but that's like the whole point is like they're both being what they think is the good father figure. Tony being the one who tries to, who tries to get this knucklehead to like go back to college and uh, right. study to become a doctor, which is obviously never going to happen. <laughs> and then Ralphie uh, realizing correctly that this guy's way too dumb for that, and thus trying to steer him, uh, you know to his best career path in the mafia but he's also too yeah. dumb for that and so uh, and so at he's, the end they're kind of just like all right well who which one of us is going to take ownership for this fucking knucklehead and neither uh, of them want to so they're both trying to shuck sh- shove responsibility off on the other one poor jackie he's just too dumb for this world <laughs> um, <laughs> yep <laughs> Uh, all right, so the next storyline we got here is uh, I think we'll just go with Carm's real quick. Uh, so Carm, I think, so I think this is a good storyline too, and another reason why The Sopranos was like ahead of its peers in television at the time. It's kind of mm-hmm. like whenever you see someone cough up blood in a movie, like you know that they're gonna die by the end of the movie. Uh, yeah, and like yeah. this is kind of a, a a cousin of that where she's <laughs> she's like talking coughing about blood out her pussy. Yeah, exactly. Well, she's doing that. She's coughing pussy blood, but she's you know she's being emotional they're showing her being hormonal and having lady problems and I, in any other show that would end in her being pregnant and it's kind of a shock that they did they didn't they gave you a left they gave us a twist in this one where they're like no this is just like a reason that she talks to her priest and uh, yeah and her priest happens to be she realizes correctly that uh the priest priest will allow her to get away with a lot more than the psychiatrist will. The previous psychiatrist that she saw was like uh, basically saying he's a bad person. You have to leave him and uh, you uh, uh, you are basically culpable and uh, you are a party to his crimes and basically saying all the real shit that she desperately did not want to hear. And she goes to the priest knowing that that's not an option. Uh, and it's really good that like they didn't make it overt, but like the entire subtext of that scene is the priest being like, of course you can take blood money. The Catholic church takes blood money all the time. We love <laughs> yeah. blood money. Have you ever heard of tithes? Come on. <laughs> yeah. We invented this. What, what I love though, is that the priest, uh, at kind of accidentally gives her uh, a divorce out that she quickly has to cover up with uh, one of the f- funnier sentences that she says in the scene. And I, I have a clip of that. You made a sacred vow. Divorce is out of the question. Unless he's your abusive, your husband. Not to me, but he is unfaithful. He's a good man, basically, but... Uh... I, I, I just, I love, you know, unless, is he abusive? Well, not to me. Yeah, he abuses other people. Yeah. You know, he's unfaithful, but he's basically a good man. Like, like all of the, everything she's just said is just like, no, 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 no. He's a very violent person and uh, he does cheat on me. But no, 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 no. That's no reason for divorce. And then, it's, uh, yeah. And then he gives her advice, which is incredible, where he's like, you just have to find your line between what you can stand to profit off of and what you can't like you got to find the uh what 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 money has he made off of being good and what money has he made off of being bad and you and you just take the good part 
Yeah, th- I guess the question is, is, is like, is it moral to live off just the interest of the blood money? <laughs> yeah. Because I, I think that's okay. I think that's allowed. Yeah, it's right? like an endowment. If he starts an endowment, you're good. You just can't, you know, you can't buy too many things with it. And then, of course, he tells her to go see an OBGYN. And go see an OBGYN. Which uh, was good advice, which uh, Carm takes and then... Uh, goes uh, out to dinner at Vesuvio with the girls. Uh, and this is maybe one of my favorite. There's, there's so many good scenes in, in this uh, in this episode. But uh, one of my yeah. favorite is uh, based uh, Rosalie April talking about how Hillary Clinton is a role model for mafia wives. Yeah, the Remember When machine is almost uh, redundant in this episode because there's like an entire, an entire Hillary scene where they all independently are like oh yeah that is i guess hillary is the real gangster i asked him what happened he tells me to mind my own business so does she in so many words they broke up is meadow okay oh please that girl is so different than i was at her age just rolls off her back there's no weight loss no sleepless nights not like the grief we go through with our husbands that's because we married these wayos it's not just us the president of the United States, for crying out loud. I mean, look what his wife had to put up with, with the blowjobs and the stained dress. Hillary Clinton? I can't stand that woman. I don't know. Maybe we could all take a page from her book. What, to be humiliated in public and then walk around smiling all the time? That is so false. I would dig a hole, I would climb into it, and I would not come out. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Liar! Yeah. yeah. Well, what does Tony do? You know he cheats on you. What are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, they're saying it like their husbands don't cheat and they don't rub yeah. it in their face constantly. Yeah. No, it's like because they don't come to the house that that's the standard. That is the line. I mean, if they yeah. come to the house, then you're a fool. But if they just yep. do it on a boat, maybe. Yep. It's just like if you take some of the money from the crime, it's okay. <laughs> but like one for Cody year, not two from the Esplanade. All I know is she stuck by him and put up with the bullshit. And in the end, what did she do? She set up her own little thing. She did. She took all that negative shit he gave her and spun it into gold. You gotta give her credit. She's a role model for all of us. I mean, Hillary Clinton is a perfect role model for them, like long before many people knew it. I think The Sopranos had that nailed like way before the rest of the world. Yeah, did. super early. It is. It's. It's pretty impressive because. Uh, I, I mean, I think history kind of uh, ended up proving that scene way too correct in in terms of like people's general feelings of Hillary Clinton, which is that she's uh, she's basically a mafia wife, and <laughs> she set up uh, most her own people thing. she set up her own little thing, her own her own little gangster shit, uh, and uh, you know, and now uh, you know, Gaddafi is dead or some shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then so we go from that to. The obvious, like the main storyline of Mm -hmm. Tony and Gloria, which is like the main, uh, the main thrust of the episode. Um, and which uh, is wonderful. I mean, the, the, the actress who plays Gloria, uh, is, uh, just, she's just incredible. Tony has a great, this is one of the best malapropisms, I think, in the entire Sopranos. Obviously, it's a running theme, but I think this is maybe one of the best is when Tony's talking about. Uh, why he fell for Gloria in the first place, even in the midst of explaining why she's crazy. Those eyes. Those dark black eyes. When she stares at you, it's like a, like a Spanish princess in one of those paintings, you know, a Goyum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, he's not wrong. You know, the Spanish princess is definitely a Goy. That's true. Yeah. And one thing that uh, Goyam painted a lot of was princesses. <laughs> yeah. The Catholic princesses specifically. Uh, yeah. No, that, that, that scene is really good. And it is, I agree with you in that, like, this episode has got like the least amount of like grading psychoanalysis. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so it, it does definitely work, but I think it part, does yeah, also- part of that is that they just wrote such a good character with Gloria that they could psychoanalyze her and it and it comes off interesting yeah and and she does like she reminds me of um lorraine brocco in goodfellas like lorraine Mm. brocco in goodfellas is just like the most vocally 
uh, impressive performance. Like she's could like she could definitely be like a punk singer in another life in the Goodfellas. Because if you watch Goodfellas, it's all just Lorraine Bracco going full minor threat, like in every scene, just fucking shrieking. And yeah. uh, and the, uh, Annabella Sciarra is kind of like that, but you got to get her going first, and then she just turns into this foghorn. Uh, and it's fucking incredible. This like foghorn of spite. And I have, I have like the moment after she gets her tire slashed where mm-hmm. they're arguing about it, which is uh, just an incredible scene with a great button. I have that. Why would you offer to pay for them if you didn't have a guilty fucking conscience? About what? Well, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> you know what? This is fucking bullshit. I'm going over. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah. who else would do it? Who knows? Kids, maybe. You know what? Ruin a great fucking evening over this shit. Kids? I don't know. Maybe uh, your fucking brother-in-law. Maybe Mr. Globe down at Globe Motors since you're America's fucking sweetheart this week. Oh. Where the fuck do you get off? This immigrant, alcoholic, fucking probably HIV-laden uh, whoa, 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 slut that? slashes my tires and you have the fucking nerve to call my life into question? She wouldn't do it. I slapped the piss out of her last time. Oh, uh, probably the line of the episode for me. <laughs> it's interesting because you're kind of wondering. She is saying, "Oh, did you? Did you really?" And you're wondering if she's doing it judgmentally or if she's horny. You know, <laughs> right? Like, she. I'm not really sure. Gloria is like the. She seems like she's the model for every Real Housewife of New Jersey. Where mm. whenever they get in an argument, it's just like this long string of insults. Like you, there's that famous clip of like the prostitution whore where she flips over the table. Prostitution whore, you are f-ing gay ninety times. You f-ing bitch. Like that entire scene is just when uh, Annabella Sierra gets going. And she's like, HIV ridden prostitute. Right. And I like that's that was Tony's line. Like as as uh, she's like, you know, uh, on this like rampage of insults, she mentions, you know, randomly is like probably HIV ridden whore. And he's like, whoa, whoa. All right. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Don't imply that I'm ha- that I have HIV. Like he's he's more scared of the fact that she's saying that out loud than anything else. It also is like part of the pattern from last episode, Pine Barrens, where they leave sort of this question hanging. Like we never do find out who slashed Gloria's tires. Yeah, it was probably the Russian, dude. I assumed it was. (laughs) Yeah, easily. Easily could be. Um, Also, Tony is uh, kind of bringing up stuff that she said in a previous scene uh, in in a scene where uh, he is just desperately doesn't want her to expand on her, the family drama that she had mentioned <laughs> yeah. she was dealing with. And uh, I actually, I, I have a clip of that as well. What that family shit you were telling me about? Yeah. It's okay if you don't want to talk about it. Really. <laughs> she said I can never see my niece and nephew again. Right before Christmas. And we had a new Santa Claus at our Christmas party in the neighborhood. Wasn't very good. Hannah and Seamus go to this like alternative (laughs) private elementary school in Santa Monica where it's all about the children's self-esteem. Yeah, I hate that shit. So I happen to ask Hannah, she's in the third grade, are you going to be in the Christmas play? And she says, we don't call it the Christmas play. We call it the winter festival. So I'm like, whatever. I don't say anything. And then Seamus says, we're not allowed to say Christmas. We call Christmas the C word. And I fucking flipped out. What does Seamus say? The fuck does he know he's 10? That's just, that's so fucking funny. <laughs> just like, first of all, she's kind of having like a, a proto, uh, you know, Starbucks cup yeah, uh, war culture war argument yeah. there. But I do also love that uh, Tony <laughs> takes a long, deep breath and goes, what did Seamus say? <laughs> he can't. Oh, it's well. He's it's trying fantastic. to convince her that he gives a shit about her family this whole scene, and then he quickly realizes that he does not. Big mistake. So Gloria uh, happens to randomly run into Carmela at her dealership uh, and decides to give her a ride home, and uh, and they just have a, a lovely little scene together in which Carm desperately wants to brag about Meadow, but. Uh, is is not given the the proper opening to do so and so she just takes it she's not too far away though she's in new york city 
It's at Columbia, actually. School of Broadcasting? Oh, no, the university. It's uh, in the Ivy League. It's one of the top schools. <laughs> I know. I was just kidding. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you never say that they're going to Columbia or Yale or Harvard right off the bat. You say they're studying in New Haven or fucking uh, Cambridge. And she's, oh, you know, right. she's in New York City, which is weird that you'd say New York City uh, when you live like 30 minutes away. Um, yeah. But, Do people uh, not say that? I don't know. I've never spent a ton of time in northern New Usually, Jersey. Usually, I don't. If you're a bridge and tunneler, don't you say the city? That's what I would yeah. think. I mean, in the Bay Area, you say the city about San Francisco. So I would assume it's. I'm pretty sure that in Jersey and on Long Island and shit, you say the city. That's what I would think. But then, she, but she did the very cliche thing of saying New York City. And then when. She, when Gloria fails to ask like the expected question, she's like, you know, Columbia. Yeah. <laughs> and she's you like, oh, yes. Uh, uh, Ivy League. So Tony gets pissed at her for, you know, showing up to his house while showing up to her work repeatedly. Uh, and then it, one of my favorite moments is is just the juxtaposition of her Tony threatening to kill Gloria with like her, co- her shitty coworker banter uh, at, yeah. the, at the end so of, a, of a clip of that. How you can tell you shrink your own date relationships. What do you mean? It's fucking over. Tony! You see, Tuesday I can take my kid to hear Raffi. <laughs> <laughs> I also really loved that scene. Um, And, you know, as often happens on this podcast, you know, someone will make mention of a a musician that I'm very fond of. And then I I just can't, I can't get that musician out of my head. Um, So uh, I I too have a clip of uh, Tony and Gloria, um, you know, getting into a, a little spat at the dealership. All right, just give me a minute. Good morning. I just thought we could switch Yeah, 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 sure. I just got a customer coming in, all right? Tony. Ring, 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 ring. Don't you fucking Tony me. Are you out of your fucking mind talking to my wife? All right. Ring, 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 ring. You drove her home. Then you look right into my eyes and you don't tell me? All right. It's just normal to be curious about someone that you love, significant others. No, it's not. Ring, ring, ring. Ring, 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 ring. It's fucking twisted. No, it is not. Look, I don't want to argue with you. You're upset. And I understand it's on the margins for someone like you. And I'm sorry, and it'll never happen again, ever. No shit. Now you can tell you shrink your own date relationships. What do you mean? It's fucking over. Ring, 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 ring. You see, Tuesday, I can take my kid to hear Raffi. Banana You and the fucking glitching. <laughs> oh, you know, just like uh, sometimes you need a little topper at the end of uh, the sure. clip. And then I just uh, I glitch out a little bit. Let me live, Vince. Sorry. Let me live. Um, yeah. I mean, listen, I, I hope that kid. Uh, I hope that guy gets to take his kid to see Rafi. I mean, that is uh, Rafi, who, by the way, um, I didn't know this until a few weeks ago is like a uh, um, big, big resistance Twitter guy. What? Yeah. I had no idea. What's his... Yeah, uh, he's like a Trump... He's a Trump reply guy now. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, the fucking... I, I, I have nothing bad to say about Rafi. I haven't thought about Rafi in a good 20 years, at least. Oh, yeah. No, you know, he's uh, he's got he's got great music. He's got Banana Phone. He's got the Baby Beluga. He's, uh, he's just... The guy does nothing but write slappers, so... Uh, well, the other musical reference in this episode is... Uh, Jackie Jr. and Carlo or Dino, I think, sitting around and they seem to be watching like a vanilla ice behind the music. Behind the music, yeah. And they're yelling. Yeah, which is that 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 was like the premiere behind the music uh, of that time too, because we all kind of wanted to know what happened to Vanilla Ice, and it was like it was the one that kind of popularized uh, the story of I think it was Suge Knight hanging him upside down uh, out of a window. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of like coming up with their own little things, like Vanilla Ice made money off of being Vanilla Ice for, I don't know, like two years and then made money off of people wondering what happened to Vanilla Ice for like the next 30. Yeah, for the rest of his life. And he's also Um, like the one musician who apparently made smart investments and has just been rich this entire time. Like he never had, 
He never had that moment where he went bankrupt and had to sell off a bunch of shit. He he never went bankrupt. No, he like invested smartly and has has been like into real estate and like house flipping and he's just been rich this entire time. <laughs> Even though Suge Knight stole half his royalties by hanging him upside down out of a balcony, that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, well, oh, he's managed. Man. He had a house flipping show. He was on uh, whatever that what was it. Not the surreal life, the one with all yes, the celebrities. Yes, surreal life. Oh, was it the? Surreal oh, it life? was surreal life. Yeah, where he got in a fight with like Todd Bridges, I think. Yeah, you got your Todd Bridges there. You got Estrada. You got Vern Troyer. It was uh, that was where Brigitte Nielsen and Flavor Flav fell in love. <laughs> Classic story. Did he uh, ever fell do... in love with being on television? I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Did he ever do like a, a celebrity boxing? That feels that feels on brand. I don't, I don't know that he had to. He didn't have to get hit in the face. He just had to show up and be Vanilla Ice, and people would give him money. Damn, that is a good life. I mean, except for the being Vanilla Ice part. <laughs> yeah, but the other shit is tight. The other shit is tight. Um, and uh, finally, uh, you know, Gloria and Tony uh, get into one final fight. Uh, which just in which Gloria reveals her true form. You know, the thing that they've been hinting at this entire season between these two, this relationship that is built on lust. And, you know, there's a little bit of a Freudian angle there. Uh, well, they just come out with it straight up and she reveals her true form. Yeah, I was kind of impressed at the restraint that it took not to put a flashback in there when she says, Oh, poor you. Like they just expected us to know that that was a reference mm -hmm. to Olivia, which like watching it now, of course the show wouldn't like take the time to hold your hand. But I feel like in, in 2001, most shows there would have been a producer telling him to put like a flashback in there just to make sure everyone got it. But yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm that person, Vince, if you're wondering who would dare take that exact scene and decide to add flashback shit it's me bro oh i fucking did oh perfect it's accidental segue get on it with the ties i'm a grown man i've had other women what do you think i lived in a freezer for him at you fine i'll sit back like, like a, a mute, mute while you screw every woman out there what the fuck do you get off huh you don't, don't care. care. What do you think? You're the only one with problems? You think my life's a fucking picnic? Oh, oh poor, poor you. you. I didn't just meet you. You want that lamp? I've known you my whole fucking life. The world is a jungle. My mother was just like you. Bottomless black hole. These blacks. You're fucking crazy. You see me, you cross the street. Because you're a dangerous fuck and I don't want you in my life. And kill me now. Go on, go, go into the ham and take the carving knife. What'd you say? And stab me here, here, now, please. Stab me, stab me, stab me. These blacks. You go near my wife. Your wife never showed any interest in my jewels. Or my family, and I'll fucking kill you. You understand me? I'll fucking kill you. I gave it all to your cousin Josephine. She always admired it. You fucking bitch! You want that lamp? <laughs> Thank you. I mean, That's it's basically a scene that you discovered that Gloria was Livia. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm really good at like dissecting art. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I can tell when uh, when art is trying to do uh, something. So uh, <laughs> I decided just to you know make it clear, make it clear that this was an art, and uh, and and add those uh, flashback scenes to it. You know, in case people were like confused about it, because I think that's uh, you know, it's 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 maybe too deep. I didn't notice all for the most parallels. Viewers. I'll give you that. Oh yeah, yeah. I I uh, I notice all I notice all parallels, dude. I'm like hella smart, and then it worked. You're gonna out. point out all of the parallels. You're, yeah, you're the, the like a Batman villain, Mr. Parallel. Mr. Parallel, dude. If, you, <laughs> if there's some parallel going on, uh, I'll point it out. And uh, you know, you may not like it. You might be like, oh, well, you think you're so smart, but uh, yeah, I am. I got big brain, Vince. Got a leotard with all the Easter eggs on it. Oh, that's right. I sure do. And uh, I'll thank you not to snicker at my talent um but yeah it is uh it, it is it it is a great scene and i feel i feel a little bit bad uh re-editing it so it's just livia talking about lamps and giving away jewelry because the acting is so fantastic and it is uh, you know it is kind of uh 
it's kind of a horrifying scene because uh you know uh you're seeing livia's kind of uh id i guess uh kind of through a um through a kind of a, a young person because a lot of times you read livia as like just an old person complaining you know and she was be, young it, once too well of course but it's like because she's uh, this old like you know senior citizen frail woman there's something about her just complaining about i wish the lord would take me you know uh that you're like yeah when you're old you, you want to die that's normal every old person wants to die and then seeing it come through gloria who's this like young successful woman just being like begging tony to kill her while they're on the ground fighting and he's got his his fucking meaty paws around her neck you're just like fuck this is uh this is dark dude this is uh i actually wondered watching uh this episode whether they made tony's hands bigger than they actually were or if uh fucking annabella skewer was just that small but yeah like his paw covers like half of her half of her head when he chokes her again yeah. hulk hands yeah straight up yeah he's got uh them you got the meaty sausage fingers you know what he has he has uh he has the the meat like the shape of uh like a like a like a little person's hands you know what mm-hmm. i mean he's got like giant dwarf hands and uh and you know they're just they're nubby but uh and they also they they do look like overstuffed sausages there's not a lot of definition they kind of just look like <laughs> big like water balloon fingers yeah yeah you know and uh she was you know about to get choked out by just uh you know fucking edward sausage hands mm-hmm. um yeah and then she, you um, know she lives and uh and then melfi processes with tony which uh which is again is good uh, i i don't <laughs> i feel like a shrink should maybe not be like oh yeah she was trying to get you to beat her up yeah Seems well slightly listen, at responsible this, at this point i think we can we've done enough of these episodes to say that melfi is very unprofessional and uh is not like she she kind of pretends to be like hey you know there's a lot of doctor patient confidentiality but she'll just go go ahead and say you know exactly uh what the issue is i mean you know he she's given away a lot of personal information about uh gloria she's an old Um, gossip just like they all are yeah exactly um do you want to do favorite least favorite yeah let's let's do it what what was your what was your favorite I mean, my biggest laugh lines were uh, the Raffi and him sla- saying he slapped the shit out of her as uh, his explanation for why it couldn't have been her. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I've talked about it already. But yeah, that end scene of Patsy Parisi saying it's not going to be cinematic, uh, that felt felt like a note that we maybe hadn't seen on The Sopranos up until that point. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that was... And, and then also ending it with uh, just a shot of him saying uh, on the phone after coming from the grocery store, like, oh, I got the shells to show that he's just kind of this like innocuous, uh, you know, normal guy that you wouldn't expect to just, you know, a few hours earlier threatened to uh, to murder a woman in cold blood. Uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty great. Um, I would say favorite scene probably the raffi scene uh and then i i I also did really enjoy jackie explaining uh the worst heist in the world to uh uh to the other guy you mean ralph ralphie explaining no no jackie explaining jackie pitching it yeah yeah jackie pitching the uh the the heist uh, but then pointing out that like one of the biggest problems uh, problems he had with with Ralphie was that he asked him to clean the dishes before they went in the dishwasher <laughs> because it's just like to him that was like the biggest sign of disrespect like yeah. you would never ask you would never ask a made guy to clean the dishes out before you put them in the dishwasher because it clogs and it's like no nah, I don't think you <laughs> I think you have a, a huge misconception about what life in the mafia is going to be like and uh, doesn't matter how big you are uh, you got to you you gotta rinse the dishes before you put them in the fucking dishwasher. Yeah, when he tells Christopher that we're with Ralphie, he means that I actually live with Ralphie in the same house. He didn't mean like yeah. as a crew. Exactly. Um, and then a least favorite, I would probably say, hey, I probably uh, you know, Carm and Meadow uh at the museum crying at paintings. <laughs> I don't, I, you know, I mean, it's if I have to pick a least favorite, sure. probably that. 
I, I saw I saw nothing in uh, that scene uh, worth worth keeping other than seeing Meadow go goth, which I really appreciated. Uh, Matt, uh, my favorite uh, oh, bros being dudes uh, watching uh, Beaver together. Can't beat that. <laughs> That's a dude rock uh, Mount Rushmore scene <laughs> uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I guess the scene with the uh, priest is yeah. my least favorite just because you sort of you know what she's going to be getting out of this and it, it just sort of moves the yeah it just sort of moves the thematic uh cable it doesn't it doesn't do anything you're not expecting yeah 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 yeah, least favorite, I think I had to go with the three Cholos, just, you know, based on the simple fact that they uh, clearly were not Cholos. And uh, and <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to know what they were. T- I guess he was just taking offense to the smoking in the store. Uh, it was like it, that part seemed like they cut something out there. Yeah, no, I mean, they were uh, they were also speaking Spanish, so they probably cut out like, a, hey, we speak English in America, mm. you know, uh, especially around that time. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I what what about like a, a alternate title? I think our malapropism corner and alter alternate title are kind of the same for me because like uh, you know instead of a morpho he uh, just calls it a mofo, um, which is right. a great it's it's a great malapropism, but it's also literally the entire episode uh, is just motherfucking. It's just a, it's a story about uh, Tony fucking, fucking his mother. mother. Yeah, I don't have any alternate titles. I don't know. Suicide by cop. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, no, that's good too. And uh, yeah, in general, if I had to like rate this episode with like a grade, mm. um, let's say solid B plus. Yeah, solid B plus. Yeah, that's fair. I would say. Well, what What about you, Matt? What 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 grade would you give this episode? I think that's about right. I mean, I like any of the ones where someone gets shot and multiple people get shot. Yeah. Uh, oh and, yeah. Uh, and so that that's got it's got that going for it uh so yeah i can't go lower than like a b b if somebody's getting murked honestly so yeah b plus that's right no matter what every episode is a solid b plus go ahead write us an email being mad about it fuck you every episode solid b plus i probably shouldn't say fuck you to the audience every episode i mean we say it in spirit in spirit yeah but really what i mean is thank you Thank you for thank you for listening to another episode of Pod Yourself a Gun. Uh, great episode, Matt Chrisman. Thank you so much for uh, for coming on and talking Sopranos with us. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Where can people uh, find you on the uh, on the old internet? Uh, my uh, handle is Kush Bomb with a C. Mm-hmm. Uh, podcast is Chapo Trap House. Uh, Twitch stream is slash Chapo Trap House uh that's about it uh only fans coming soon hell yeah oh i'm excited to uh, subscribe for feet pics on your only fans oh man uh, the peop- i'm just uh, if i actually did that i'm imagining the people who would pay for them uh, they, they would they're the worst feet on earth <laughs> some sickos hearing that and getting off already <laughs> i can uh it's weird but i already have an image of them that's strange I don't know why. In my head, I'm like, I know exactly what kind of foot we're looking at, and just the right amount of like uh, toe knuckle hair. <laughs> it is well. Uh, nobody's finding out until the, un- the until I eventually do just say fuck it and have a holy fans. Yeah, that's why hey. this is a tease. Yeah, 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 we're teasing that future only fans for Matt Chrisman. So mm-hmm. uh, be be ready for that in the new year. I'll say I'm giving you a deadline. All right, everyone. Patreon.com slash Frotcast for all the bonus episodes of our regular scheduled podcast in which we talk about other things, not just Sopranos. We talk about movies and television, and sometimes we just talk about, uh, you know, OnlyFans and feet pics. Uh, so Patreon.com slash Frotcast. Frotcast at gmail.com for all your questions, comments, concerns. Let us know what you think about whatever specific thing we got wrong in the Sopranos and how we could be better at knowing about it, even though... Ah, who cares? So, frogcast at gmail.com. Please email us. Vince, what is the Google Voice number? 415-275-0030. All right, everyone. Thank you so much again for listening. And until next time, don't stop believing.